Uh, I'm very happy to be here, and it's a great thing that Saku has made it possible for all of us to be together in this room. Uh, as you know, in different international comparisons, we Finns have been doing quite well when we're talking about education and learning. So you can kind of say that we have kind of figured it out that what is the thing about teaching and learning, that we are a kind of a chosen nation in these issues, and I'm going to tell you now with the next 15 minutes what is the secret recipe for the success in these areas, and I'm going to give you a five point five step policy that how you can be successful in these areas. I'm kidding. <laughs> I don't have that recipe. I don't have those five points. Um, I've been involved in the in the uh, World Bank's development report for year uh, 2018, which actually was launched about a, a week ago. And for the first time in the history of World Bank, it was done on education. And the kind of big issue there was to see that where we are going in a global setting in this sector. And there was also the kind of understanding that we have excellent schools in the world. We have excellent teachers, excellent classrooms, excellent schools. But how can we make that a systemic kind of character? That we could have excellent cities, we could have excellent nations, and we could succeed on a global level. And on that report, the World Bank's report, uh, there are good news and there are bad news. The good news is that we have gotten the children of the world to school. Then that has happened in a quite a short period of time that children today go to school. That's the good news. The bad news is that in many, many nations, the children don't learn much in schools. So we are kind of talking about that we have moved to face the kind of learning crisis on a global level. And when we kind of look through different um, education policy reforms around the world, you kind of get the picture of a list, big and long list of failures. And that kind of got us to thinking that it actually is not the question that what is the education policy, but more about the question that how do you, can you implement the policy. It's not the question of what, but it's the question of how. And that is something that I would like to share with you. Um, it was the um, media researcher and scientist, uh, Mac Luhan, who said that years ago that media is the message. And I think that we have something similar here that we are experiencing that actually the way we implement the education policy is the strategy. The implementation is the strategy. And I have a title that enhancing the growth mindset in the field of education. And when we're talking about the growth mindset, um, it is something that sounds good, right? 
It's something that we are all kind of sharing, and that's what we are doing. Of course, growth mindset, who can be against it? Uh, but is it really so? That when I'm kind of looking, for example, that how the public service in my country and other countries, how we are functioning, um, I start wondering that what is the opposite of growth mindset? And I think it's a fixed mindset. So I would like to actually first say a few words that what is a fixed mindset? Fixed mindset is a way of seeing the world as a machine where it's a kind of a closed system where there's a very clear division of labor between everybody, where there's a strong hierarchy where you're doing things from the top to the bottom, where you know the truth and then you kind of make sure that you implement that truth in your system step by step. It's a world where you see talent or creativity as something as fixed. It is a quality of the few selected ones who have gotten it as a birth gift. Talent is something that you have or you don't have. Creativity is something unusual meant for only those few creative ones. It's a world where you can count on testing and measuring things, because you know what you should measure and test, because you have the right answers. And having said all this, I think that quite often, actually, what we are enhancing in our system is the fixed mindset. And then we come back, can come back to the issue of what is then the growth mindset. Actually, the growth mindset starts from not knowing. It's a mindset that has the ability to flirt with uncertainty. It's the mindset where you understand that there are very strong interconnections between different actors in the system which have a kind of a co-creation function uh, with themselves. It's a system that sees that creativity and talent is something that is possible for everybody. It is a mindset where you believe that what's important is the kind of self-transformational identity of persons. In my young days, I had a pleasure of, of playing the trumpet and um, Though I had a classical music education, I mostly played in, in, in big bands and, and jazz bands. And to me, the growth mindset is the way that a jazz band functions. It's something where the inner action is in the center. It's a question that knowing is a capacity that comes out of individuals interacting with each other. It's a question that you learn constantly by doing things in a certain context. And with your own expertise, you communicate with the others, you communicate with the audience, and that's where the kind of unique things, the best possible solutions in a certain context grow out from. And that's the kind of um, 
world that I hope that where we could also make the education policy. And then we should see, for example, on the national level, understand that we are talking about an ecosystem where we have different roles, but we must connect with each other and we must interact in order to succeed in the implementation. And we should understand that the learner and teacher interaction is the centerpiece in the education policy. And how to do implementation in a, this kind of a mindset? I think the most important thing is to be able to create trust. To create trust in the system so that teachers, principals, they can develop their work. They have the autonomy to develop that interaction between the learner and the teacher. Because they are the best experts. That's where the growth comes from. Then we should have a coherent vision. What is the direction we are headed towards? We should not have a kind of a new education policy every year. Because that's pretty much what we are experiencing. That when there's this implementation gap and things don't go through from the top to the bottom as wanted, then you kind of come up with new policies. If they would, and they won't. And the teachers get frustrated because new and new things keep and keep coming and nothing changes. And for that reason, we should have a kind of a coherent vision that we would, should implement on a kind of a uh, five to ten year perspective for the minimum. And then we should have all the different stakeholders involved in implementing it. Of course, the teachers, the whole school community, but also the society around, the parents, the homes, the other actors, the civil society, get those involved in the discussion where the coherent vision is created and implemented. And then we should have the, the transformative leadership also who understands that they don't have the right answers but they must be able to cope with the uncertainty and create the shelter for those who do the actual work, the development work. And I think that what we're talking here on a national level, we're talking actually about the future of nation states. That is it possible for nation states to change their mindset from being kind of in control to a mindset of being innovative and enhancing innovativeness. Nation states are good at controlling things, but that's something that goes against being innovative. And I think that it is something that it is not a question of individual nation states, but it's a question that how we can learn on a global level from each other's experiences and share those experiences and learn them. So, as I said in the beginning, um, we have a secret recipe, but the secret recipe is start learning with others. And I think this is what Saku and Saku's team and all you here are doing. And we are very, very willing from the Finnish side and Finnish, my agency side, to take part on that learning and being part of that kind of shared learning process. Thank you for being here and sharing your ideas and innovations and I hope that we can together solve the learning crisis. Thank you.